Shall we just turn our Bibles to Psalm 115? And we're going to read uh, verse 12 to 18. I want you to look into your Bible, follow the word of the word of the Lord, and it will, you know, minister to you one more time as you just as we together look into the word of the Lord. The Lord has been mindful of us. He blessed us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. You are blessed of the Lord, which made heaven and earth. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has he given to the children of men. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. What a blessed time in, you know, looking into this passage. We've been holding here for a long time and studying so many good things about God's blessing, how it comes when we understand the operation and the functioning of God's law into our life. And today, as we learn about God's love increase, you got to know that God loves to bless you and increase you. Do you know that God loves to bless and increase you? And that's why I love to talk about God's blessing and God's increase over your life. Today, when you look into the world's economy, you find uh, it shows that there is no possibility for you to increase and to be blessed. But I want you to understand, world's economy and God's economy is completely different. Today, when you look at the world's economy, world's condition, you know, you, you will never have any hope that you can increase, you can, you know, multiply, you can be blessed. That's why God is saying, my economy and my system is different from the world's system and world's economy. You got to understand that. That's why, you know, when God says, I will bless you, when God says, I will increase you, if you compare it to your, you know, if you compare it to the world system today, you might say it's impossible. The word of God says, he calls things as though they were, you know, though it does not exist. It's not exist. It is not there, but God calls it out. God, if God says it's there, if God says it will, I will bless you. If God says I will bless the work of your hand, I just got to believe it. I got to understand how the law of increase is going to work in my life. And when I concentrate that, what happens? I will be blessed. I can be blessed. World system or world economy is always driven by greed. I want to understand. Today people are working, you know, not with a good intention, not with, you know, the intention of God's economy or God's system. Many people are driven by greed system. That is in the world. What is the, you know, approach today people have, you know, people are not worried about, you know, the other person. People are more selfish. People are, you know, more, you know, you know, looking into their own benefit. I don't mind about how you are, how the other person is, you know. That's how the world is functioning today, my friend. When you look at the bank system, you know. I'm not blaming it, but I just want you to understand it. You know, when you look at the bank system, bank is ready to give more loan. Even if the person is not eligible, even if that person is, you know, doesn't have the ca you know, capacity to pay back, you know, they don't mind. They just want to give. Because the world economy and the world system is being operated by greed. But God's system is completely different, my friend. God's economy is completely different. That's why we are learning about God's law of increase. And when you learn about that, what happens, you know, you will understand 
that you are in God's, though you are in this world, though we are on this earth, living our earthly life, yet you will understand there is another system that is functioning in you. You are not driven by the world economy and the world system, but I am driven by God's economy and God's system because I belong to the kingdom of God. You understand what I'm saying? We belong to the kingdom. To make you understand, I belong to Christ. You know, I belong to Christ. I am into his kingdom. His kingdom is in me. I talked about that, you know, for a long time. The kingdom of God is in you, my friend. God wants to be your king. God wants to be, you know, your supplier. God wants to be your God who wants to bless your life. For all of that to happen, God is saying, you are the ambassador of Christ. You get the picture? God is saying, you are not into world system. You are not into world's economy. But you are into my economy. You are into my system. And it, when God says you are into my system, what is he saying? You are in my kingdom and you are Christ ambassador. We are the ambassador of Christ. Do you know the meaning of ambassador? Many people know ambassador car. I'm not talking about ambassador car. I'm talking about being ambassador of Christ for Christ. Every country has a you know, representative called as the ambassador of their country. What do a rich you know, country does, no matter whatever the country is, when a country sends an ambassador to represent their country in another country, in another place, Look at the, you know, privilege. Look at the, you know, mindset of that ambassador. No matter the ambassador is representing a country, even if he goes to a poor country, poor economic system, he is not run or he's not controlled or he's not driven by that poor economy, but he's been done, he's been driven, he's been, you know, controlled, he's been, you know, provided by the benefit of his country. He lives by the standard of the country from which he was being sent to. You are able to understand what I am saying? That country will take care of his provision. That country will take care of his accommodation. The country will take care of all of his you know, needs. The reason why they take care of that ambassador's need is because he, the, you know, that you know, country wants to show that how their country is able to provide and take care of all that is required for that you know, ambassador because that ambassador is representing their country. He's not going to live there begging around. He's not going to roam around there not knowing what to do. All the benefits and the provision and the daily you know, requirement is being given for that ambassador. That's the picture you got to have. When you are in God's system, when you are in God's economy, all that you and I got to do is I got to learn about God's law of increase. I got to make sure that the law, the ability that God has put in me to increase, I got to connect it. I got to, you know, understand the functioning and the operational method of the God's law of increase. And what happened when I am into his kingdom? I represent that kingdom, my friend. No matter where I am, no matter where I work, no matter where I live, I am representing God's kingdom. I am the ambassador of Christ. I am representing the kingdom of God where I live. That's, that's what reminds me every time, you know, when I, when I see so many things happening around us, you know, I just remind myself... Sometimes the, you know, country who sends their ambassador to another country, sometimes when there is a downfall in their economy, in that particular country's economy, or, you know, some, you know, 
kind of, you know, natural disaster of there is some economic crisis. Maybe that country which send their ambassador as their representative, they might tell to them, you restrict all these, you know, thing, you know, try to, you know, you know, cut down because we're going to, you know, cut down your uh, privileges, we're going to cut down this and that. So make sure that you live according to that, adjust yourself. Maybe a country's ambassador who's representing their country, that country might tell that ambassador to reduce all their benefits. But let me tell you, you and I are representing Christ, the maker of heaven and earth. And when we belong to him, there is no shortage in him with God. There is no failure with God. There is no downfall with God, my friend. That's why you got to understand that you are representing a kingdom. You are representing a, a Christ. You are the ambassador of that Christ. And that Christ is saying, that God is saying, you are in my kingdom. You are operated by my economy. You are operated by my system. Aren't you glad about it? I'm so glad. Now I got to check myself. Where am I? Am I being driven, operated by the world's economy or the world's system? Or am I being operated by God's system and God's economy? And when I do that, when I know that I'm being operated by God's kingdom and by God's economy and God's system, I do not put my trust in the uncertainty, uncertain riches, but I put my trust in the living God. You're getting the difference? For that, we've been learning about God's law of increase. We started learning for the few weeks uh, how we got to be diligent in our work, how we got to be diligent uh, in obeying God's word, doing the will of God. And then we learned about how we got to apply faith principle, faith law. I told you three things work together. Law of diligence, law of obedience, law of faith. These three things work together, my friend. And when this work together, what happens? You are functioning God's law of increase. You are functioning God's system and your life is driven by God's economy and you will know God will take care of all your needs. All of your challenges, you will have the mighty warrior, Jesus Christ, battling for you. Some people, you know, they are very diligent in their work. The law of diligence is working. In some people's life, law of obedience is working. Doing the will of God is working. But many times people fail in one law and that one law is law of faith. When it, time to, when it is time for them to apply the law of faith, that's where many people fail, my friend. What about us? Are we diligent in our work? Yes, we are diligent in our work. Are we obedient to God's word, finding out the will of God, doing according to the will of God? Yes. But when it comes to faith law, that's why I told you these three laws will work together to produce God's increase in every area of your life. I showed you last week, you know, faith Law or faith principle works through your mouth. I showed you last week. That's why Jesus said, whatsoever you say will happen. A mouth. Faith principle starts with your mouth, my friend. Words are conceived in your heart, formed by your tongue, and then brought out through your mouth. And when you speak out from your mouth, you got to understand that God is saying, whatsoever you say will happen. Whatsoever you say, that will happen. You know, that's what God is saying. Whatsoever you say, what do you say about your life? What do you say about your situation? What do you say about your future? What do you say about your family? What do you say about your job, your business? What do you say about the work of your hand? What do you say about your husband? What do you say about your wife? What do you say about your children? God's saying that's going to happen. To make it very simple, God is saying, don't be a bad mouth. Have you seen people having bad mouth? 
not stinking mouth you know i'm talking about bad mouth some people think you know when you, are, you know world says you know you know this guy mouth is bad mouth when when do they say when this man or when a person speaks bad words they say he has a bad mouth you know make sure you don't have a bad mouth to cast out that bad mouth you got to apply faith principle which starts with your mouth god say what so you say that will happen in tamil it is nicely you know said bad mouth ketta vai sotta vaya varu kudadu noted ana vaya varu kudadu now sometime you know our mouth is bad words that comes out of our mouth destroys our life i showed you last week all of that from proverbs i showed you you know how your own words is a snare how your own words is destroying you how your own word you know it's trying to you know destroy all the blessings of god today we're going to just look into that you know don't be a bad mouth you know when some people are you know good but when it comes to a conversation when it comes to the point of you know bringing words out of their mouth they always talk negatively you see many people you know they have a bad bad mouth regarding money you know that's very important subject right we are we have a very bad mouth regarding money for those people you know their own words itself is just trying to stop money come into their life with their bad mouth they hate money they say they don't want money just because of what they said it will certainly be the you know conclusion of what their condition will be how is your mouth my friend this morning is your mouth a bad mouth when you when you don't you know when somebody talks negatively about you when somebody say don't come to my house will you go to their house you know when you sudu sorane you know when you have some <laughs> all these things you know when somebody say don't come to my house you will never go to their house right same way if you have a bad mouth about money money will not come to you the reason why i'm 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 talking about the aspect of money is because that will make you understand better how much we got to change the words that comes out of our mouth regarding every you know issues of life it's it's applicable to money my friend when you bad mouth about money money will not come there are some good christians but you know when it comes to money they always talk negatively about it have you heard some statement like this you know they will say ah where are you going to take all this money if you die have you heard people saying that where are you going to take all this money if you die for such people i want to say if you have you know thought where am i going to take all this money i say come on give give your give your money to me now that's a shocking statement you know people who are uh, little drowsy now you would have got up you know when pastor says give your money you know now you got up right when you give your money what we do we use it for god its work we use it for spreading the good news of jesus christ we would use it for gospel sake but as long as you've been talking about bad you know negative aspect about money let me tell you there will be no sign for you to prosper in your life because such person will always say i don't want money i don't need it let me tell you if you declare it like that it is confirmed my friend it will not come to you 
If you are sick and if you say, ah, this is my fate, you will never receive healing. If you say, I want deliverance, you know, I don't think God can rescue me from this problem. You will, you know, for your lifetime, you will be into that problem. You got to understand why God brings in money. Why God is teaching you about God's love increase. Because he's trying to say every time when God gives you money in your hand, every time when God brings substance in your hand, God has a reason for it. God has a purpose for it. <laughs> God is not giving money so that you can go play, you know, much bingo. And you can play all, you know, PUBG, Big G and everything. You know, it's, God is not giving money for that. Today, very famous is Ludo. People are playing Ludo. For that, they will, you know, even spend money to buy points. For that, God is not giving you, my friend. You know, in First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 and 18, it says, you know, God is the one who brings all things into your life so that you will enjoy everything. And God says, eh, don't be high-minded. Don't be high-minded about your riches, your money. Verse 18 says, but make sure that you communicate it, you distribute it, and you put to good use. You're getting what I'm saying? you got to put it to good use, my friend. The reason why God blesses you, the reason why God is teaching about law, you know, law of diligence, law of obedience, and now law of faith is because God is saying when everything God brings into your hand, God is saying it has a purpose. God has a purpose. Use it for the good use. That's why we've been learning about faith principle. And that faith principle, God says, starts with your mouth. Whatever you say, it will happen. I showed you last week, you know, the roly. Whatever you say it will happen. If you want to increase, talk about God's law of increase. If you don't do that, you will automatically decrease. Talk and do about... Uh, the law of God's increase in your life, you will start to increase, my friend. Some Christians are very, you know, you, you would see so many Christians, they are so moral, so ethic, and so, uh, you know, good, good aspects are there, but when it comes to money, they say, have you heard people saying like this? They'll say, money you will have today, tomorrow it will go. Exactly, it will go away from you, my friend. You know what the king Ezekiel did, you know, in, uh, in 1 Kings chapter 20, you could find uh, he allowed the ambassador of Babylon to come and see all of his treasures. And when he came and when, you know, uh, King Ezekiel opened up uh, his treasures and showed him, you know, he would have not been a you know, mute person. He would have not kept his mouth shut. When he opened up his treasure and when he showed all of his treasures and everything to, you know, the Babylon ambassador, you know, he would have said everything, you know. I think, I think he would have said, look, look, all that the treasures that I have is a sign that th with this I was able to be victorious. Bad mouth. What happened? Next... Uh, Next day, I, the prophet Isaiah comes and is asking, what have you said? What have you shown? Did you show everything? And while showing, he would have absolutely spoken, you know, so many, you know, rubbish words. And you know what God said? God said to, through the man of God, whatever you showed, it will go away. So I tell to people, you know, when they say money today you will have, tomorrow it will go. For you, definitely it will go. You will. Because, the, because Jesus said, whatsoever you say will happen, my friend. If you are diligent in your work, if you are obeying to what God is telling you, then you got to be, you know, you know applying this law of faith. And in that law of faith, God says, one of the principles is, 
whatsoever you say will happen. You able to follow what I'm saying? God says, whatsoever you say will happen. If whatsoever you say will happen means then I got to, you know, make sure that I apply this faith principle through my mouth, not based on my feelings, not based on my emotion. I'm not going to talk on believing my feelings. I'm not going to talk on by believing my emotion, but I'm going to talk on by believing the word of God, which he puts in my heart. Because when I speak the word of God, it is a fountain. It is the answer for all the issues of my life. How can you stop your bad mouthing, my friend? If you want to, you know, stop talking bad things out of your mouth, then you got to apply the word of God, the promises of God. That's very important. What are you applying to stop your bad mouth? Bad mouth means words that is destroying your life. Words that is destroying your family. Words that is destroying your own effort. Very important. What do you say about your, you know, upcoming payments? What do you say about your commitments? It's more important. Do you say, I will pay my bill after the due date? Or I will pay it a little later? Everybody is doing that like that. Let me also follow it. Or are you going to say, no, no, no. I have the blessing of the Lord in my work. God brings every blessing into my life. Therefore, I will make all the payments on time. Even before the due date, I can make the payment because God has blessed my work. Do you say like that? Or do you say with the people who say, you know, I pay all my payments only after the due date, you know, why do you worry about it? Every country is making their payment only after the due date. And in order to pay it, they borrow. Why don't you borrow? You can also borrow and make your payment. Be very careful with such persons who says you can borrow and make your payment, you know. Make sure that you don't have any connection with them, you know. That will corrupt the law of God's increase in your life. You're working opposite to God's law of increase. They want you to, you know, borrow and, and they want to see that you are not able to make any payment for that and you will, you know, suffer and they want to see, you know, Tamil it says, Wangi. No, no, that's not what God wants to see. God wants to see that you come out of your depths, come out of your problems, and live with the blessing and the increase of God into every effort of your hand, my friend. You getting what I'm saying? Today you might have borrowed for one or two or three things, you know, but uh, you are having an ambition. You are, you are setting a goal that I will not borrow. I, don't, I will not borrow. But today you, are, you have two or three or four commitments where you are you know, paying for that. Make that payment. But the ultimate aim, ultimate goal is that I will not borrow. Let me tell you my friend, at least aim for heaven. At least aim for the sky, for the cloud, you know, so that you can reach the top of the hut. At least the idea will at least, you know, that ambition at least will drive you, my friend. Keep saying every day, I will not borrow. Lord, today I have I borrowed. There are so many loans. But in the name of Jesus, I believe that you will bless the work of my hand. If you have so much loans and debts, my friend, make a commitment. Make a declaration. Aim. Set this aim. Say, I will not borrow. What happened? 
you will see god will bless you in the coming days your mindset will change your approach will change anything you want to buy you will not buy through a loan but what happened you will see that the blessing of god brings everything in your hand and according to your law of diligence and according to the law of obedience according to the will of god god will bless you and make you to buy everything with the sufficiency of god but many people you know they are not like this you know you find so many people they say they will find where can i get loan from which person i can borrow they will you know they have they have uh, you know hunted the whole street whole relative whole friends nobody is left they are wondering where where can i find someone you know from whom i can grab all these things and they pray to god god please show me someone from whom i can borrow let me tell you for such prayer god will never answer you but god will help a person who has an aim that i will not borrow according to your scripture lord you said you will not borrow but you will lend i believe that scripture i work towards that scripture lord i apply all your principles and i want to be diligent in my work i want to be obedient to you lord and now i apply this faith principle by speaking out that i will not borrow keep saying that keep saying that you know let me tell you your physical body will align to it what are you saying the word of god says you shall not be below but you shall be above you shall not be tail but you shall be the head that's what jesus said in mark 11:23 he says whatsoever you say will happen will come to you that's what's going to happen my friend i showed you the first principle you know let me take you to the next aspect of this faith principle you know applying faith what is the next aspect aspect you know first principle is your mouth speaking words out of your mouth god says whatsoever you say will happen i took time to show you last week and this you know week i want to focus on the next aspect of faith applying you know faith principle is god saying not only speaking out words you need faith but for receiving from god you also need what you also have to use apply faith so i i say this as receiving faith by faith you receive the blessing of god by faith you receive from the lord for your salvation what do you need you need faith to receive your salvation for your healing what do you need you need faith to receive your healing for your blessing well, what do you need to do you need to have faith in in believing that god blesses your work you automatically receive the blessing of god when you diligently work when you obey to the word of god for salvation you need faith my friend what do you have to do you have to believe that jesus christ you know paid the penalty for your sin for your curse he died on the cross of calvary he finished uh, every you know penalty that is required on behalf of us i got to believe that when i believe it what happened i receive the salvation if you just say you know no no i will close my eyes i will wait uh, for salvation Oh, let somebody prophesy about that way. I will wait. When you hear about what Jesus has done for you, what happens? Faith comes into you. And when that faith comes into you, it gives you a conviction that my sins are forgiven. I am the child of God. I believe I want the Savior into my life. And when you openly declare and receive him into your heart, what happens? You receive the salvation. that's what god is saying first principle is you have to open your mouth and say speak apply faith in your words now after applying words with faith 
now god is saying it's time for you to receive tell someone next to you when i apply the next process is i will receive with what faith you apply it with that same faith you have to receive you getting what i'm saying with what faith you have applied your mouth the words that you brought out of your mouth you know with that same faith words you got to receive it in your life you got to hold on in that same mode come with me to mark chapter 11 we got many scripture this you know morning to show you but i got very little less very little time never mind we are sailing on the same ship we will sail till the coming of the lord <laughs> all right let's turn our bibles to mark chapter 11 verse 23 talks about mountain words mountain it's talking about mountain how you can break your mountain how you can change your problem how you can change your obstacle how god says if you believe and if you speak out is a which he saith shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he says we saw that last week applying faith through our words and now today what i want to focus here is was 24 look with me in verse 24 Therefore I say unto you what things soever you desire look at that word with me whatsoever you desire what things soever you desire when you pray when you pray believe that you receive them look at that when you pray believe that you receive them look at that word comes receiving faith we are talking about receiving faith faith receives with what faith you have applied with that same faith you got to believe that you will receive now it says when you pray believe that you receive them and what it says and you shall not have them is your bible says you shall not have them or is your bible says you shall have them my bible clearly says you shall have them i want you to underline this word whatsoever you desire when you pray come on everybody say when i pray i believe that i receive it come on my friend declare with me when you pray when you pray you got to say i believe i receive it this is an important aspect in faith this is a very important aspect not only applying faith when you speak out word but when you when you pray for something you got to believe that you receive it with faith if you ask somebody who is praying what happened you prayed what happened you know they they will say i don't know uh, let me wait you know i think i got to wait I don't know whether it will happen or not pastor you pray and tell me you go around blabbering everywhere that's bad mouth you understand what i'm saying that's bad mouth got to change your bad mouth you go around say i don't know what will happen that's not what it says here believe that you will receive them that's not what it is If you are believing then God is saying hold on focus on that same mode believe that you receive it for you what what you have been praying for If you're praying for your health believe that you are healed If you're praying for victory believe that God produced that victory to the effort that you put forth your hand If you believe for peace if you believe for deliverance believe on it my friend stay on that same mode many christians often they go to airplane mode then they come to network mode offline online offline online no 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 faith mode i'm talking about faith mode not 
offline, online. Not aeroplane, network mode. I'm talking about faith mode. If you stay on the same faith mode, now when you pray with that belief, and if somebody asks you what happened, you would say, I know. I believe that I receive for what I have prayed. You might think, you know, if I say like that, some people will think wrong. Some people even think that I already have it. Some people have misunderstanding about what is things and this and that. What do I mean by saying when I pray? Look at it says, when I pray, when you pray, believe that you receive them. That means it's not yet in my hand, but faith says it's mine. Faith is the substance of the things hoped for and the evidence of the things not seen. It's not seen. Victory is not seen. Success is not seen. Health is not seen. Deliverance is not seen. But I believe I prayed for that and I know God will give it to me because it's mine. Health is mine. Blessing is mine. Deliverance is mine. Peace is mine. Because all that I say it's mine is what God wants to give to my life, my friend. It's what God wants to give to your life, my friend. That's what belief is. Before receiving, you got to believe it, that you will receive it. After receiving, you don't have to believe at all. Imagine, let me give you an example. Suppose if you need a 500 rupees and you believe, Lord, satisfy my need, provide my need. I need 500 rupees for this, Lord. It's a crisis. It's an emergency. Lord, I need, I believe that you will supply my need. You can believe for that. Imagine, suppose you have 500 rupees in your hand and you just take it out of your hand and you say, ah, Lord, I believe I need 500. Lord, I believe I receive 500. You have 500 in your hand. What people will think? They will think you are a nonsense. They think you are a fool. Don't worry about what people think about you. Don't worry about who's talking about you, whether they talk better about you or good about you, bad about you. Don't ever forget one thing. You are not in world's economy. You are not in world's system. But you and I are in God's economy and God's system. And in God's system, God says, apply faith when you speak out. And when you, when you want to receive, hold on in that same mode. Hebrew 11.6 says, faith is what? Believing that God is... And knowing that he is the rewarder of everyone who seeks him diligently. I believe God is. I believe that God is alive. I believe God is still working. I believe on that. Therefore, I know that he will reward me. What do you believe? Do you believe what you pray? Do you believe what you ask for that you receive it? That's very important, my friend. Today, I believe. I don't see God, but I believe. I feel, I experience God in my heart, in my life, in my spirit. I feel the presence of God, the working of God in me. Imagine somebody, you know, brings you to, a ch to this blessings in a church. And I'm preaching here, I'm pastoring here. And if somebody's telling you for the first time, that he is Pastor Jaconia Swarnaraj and he is the you know, pastor here preaching the word of God. First time you get to know me and you understand, you believe that it is, it is me, you know, Jaconia Swarnaraj. And next time when he comes, the same person tells you, don't you know that he is Pastor Jaconia Swarnaraj? What will you say? You will say, I see it already, I know. I don't, I don't, you don't have to tell me. I know he's, he's, he's Jaconia Swarnaraj. After seeing, after knowing, you don't have to, you know, after receiving it, you don't have to believe it. Before receiving it, you got to believe that what you prayed, what you're asking, I believe that I receive it because it's mine in Jesus' name, man. That's the hope, my friend. 
that shows whether you are staying on the same mode or you're going on offline, online, you're shifting. Let me show you some more thing here. This is very important. To stop your bird, bad mouth, the word of God, the promises of God must be declared. And in order to receive, you need to apply faith. You got to say, stay in the same faith mode. That's why we, 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 we read here, it says, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them. Before receiving it, at receiving itself, God is saying, believe that you receive them. And you shall have them, God says. Before it comes to you, you believe. Because you are praying to a God who can bring everything into possible. And what you ask, it's the will of God. And what you work, you're working with the diligence. That's why I told you three laws, working together, law of diligence, law of obedience, and law of faith now. Don't separate it. If you separate it, you are not operating under the law of God's increase. Let me show you some more you know, illustration. How you can be assured about receiving. How you can develop the receiving side of your life. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Look with, look with me in verse 14. Notwithstanding you have well done that you did communicate with my affliction. Paul is talking about how you have been helpful to me. He's talking to the Philippians believers. He's saying how you've been helpful to me. He's talking there. And verse 15 says, Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning. Look at that word. Now this is where I want you to underline your Bible. Paul is talking about the receiving benefit. Receiving, you know, area, how you can develop it. You want to develop the receiving area in your life? How many of you want to develop the receiving area? Everybody. He says, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning, look at that word, giving and receiving, but you only. Paul is saying, every, ch every other church forgot me, but you alone. But you remembered me in your giving and receiving. Oh, I like that word. He's saying giving and receiving. He should have supposed to say, I remember you are the only church who remember me giving. Why is he adding the receiving part there? Look at verse 16. He's adding a receiving part there. He's saying giving and receiving, but nobody else except you, except this one church. We forget about uh, two sides in prayer. Christian only believe one side of the prayer and that one side is, I just have to ask him. That's my job. I, I have done my job. Then it's rest is to God. No, no, God is saying, you have done only one side, one, one half of the prayer part. The other half of the prayer part is, God is saying, you have to ask. The other half of the prayer is, you have to receive. Asking and receiving combines together in order to bless your life. Same way it's for all of your business, all of your work, all of the other aspect of your life. Many people stop in one part saying, I will give. I will not focus about receiving. But here Paul is talking about, uh, here Paul is talking about how they have given and how they will receive you getting what I'm saying? It's talking about how 
they will have it's because they have given look at what 16 it says for even in thessalonia you send one once and again unto my necessity look at you've been constantly giving me not because i desire a gift was 17 he says but i desire fruit that may abound to your account look at that word he's trying to say beautiful thing there he's trying to say when you when you give there is a part of you receiving Why Paul is talking about the receiving part because when he talks about that receiving part he's saying for receiving there is an account for you You're getting what I'm saying And he's saying I desire fruit that may abound into that account not only give receiving but I am more happy that you have an account where you receive the blessing the increase of God into your life you able to get what i'm saying this is the important part it's not only the part of giving many people they say you know if you give don't expect anything else that's a wrong approach god says if you give by faith by that same faith receive it when you pray believe that you will receive them so you shall have it god says paul is also saying the same logic here he's saying you've been giving and receiving look at the two word he, he uses particularly in order to show that when you give there's another account is opening for you to receive that's why we are talking about receiving faith Paul says He says I desire a gift but I desire not because I desire a gift He's saying not because I am in need I am you know you are giving and I am appreciating you know He's saying if there is a part of giving then there is a part of receiving Do you have that account my friend Have you opened that receiving account? Look at that word. Notice that word. It says account. The word account is a very general word. Everybody knows the word account. And you find deliberately God is using the very natural word account. Have you heard about that account? Do you have that account? Have you opened that account? Have you developed that account of receiving account? Paul is saying, have you opened that account? Paul is saying, do you have this kind of account? When you speak in faith, do you have the receiving account? What is the receiving account? Look, Jesus is talking about the receiving account in Matthew chapter 6. Go with me to Matthew chapter 6. Let's look there. Matthew chapter 6. Verse 19 to 21. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon the earth where moth and rust do with corrupt and where thieves break and steal it. Break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven whether where neither moth nor rust do it corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal for where your treasure is there will your heart be also look at what god says here when you read this passage it's not talking about god is not saying you should not save you should not have a bank account that's not what it says here god is talking in the book of proverbs how you got to save how god will teach you to save things in your life how god you know gave guidance to joseph to save that land land of egypt from the famine well in advance 
saving is not a sin you know you got to save you understand how important saving your money to for this crisis what we are going through uh, god will always minister you god will always teach you that you got to save uh, and you know be well prepared you getting what i'm saying so god is not saying you, you should not save you should not you know have a bank account no no god is not saying that god is not pointing out here such things what god is trying to say here is he's trying to say where is your treasure he's asking where is your treasure jesus is asking where are your treasures where do you lay up lay it up god is saying where you lay it up it is the indication of where your heart is god is not saying you know saving is wrong opening a bank account is wrong no 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 that's not what god is saying how do you look into your money how do you spend your money how do you save your money how you use your money that will show you where your heart is if you use your heart in a right way and if you you know you know approach it in a right angle you will always give and you will receive and when you give and when you receive what happens it's not only in heaven the benefit will be for now and for eternity you will receive your benefit now my friend and you will receive your benefit in your eternal life but many people when they read the scripture matthew 6 uh, to you know verse 19 to 21 receiving account means you know they forget that you know it's not about uh, the blessing that you enjoy in the earthly life it's the you know account it's uh, talking about heavenly account no 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 god is not a god who says you will not be blessed here god says receiving faith will help you to enjoy the blessings here as well as in your eternity don't take it wrongly this is very important imagine you go to a bank and you deposit the bank says you can only deposit you cannot withdraw means will you use that bank for your life you will say i will i never want to use that bank so do you think god says you know lay up treasures in heaven that means that god doesn't want you to have anything on the earth does it mean that god saying don't save money here you know don't have a bank account here don't do any good work here god is saying without giving there is no point of receiving that's why paul deliberately is using the word i know how you have been giving and receiving you getting what i'm saying god is saying when you when you give the words of faith out of your mouth when you give your things when you do a good work out of faith you will receive back believe that you will receive believe that you receive when you believe that you receive you open your account you open your you know account in heaven you open your treasures your treasure your account you lay up treasures in heaven my friend not only on earth mark chapter 10 you know there was a rich young ruler who came and asked jesus what should i do to inherit the eternal life you find deliberately jesus saying go sell all your possession and give to poor and then come and follow me so that you will have treasures in heaven he is purposely using why is he using that word treasures in heaven is to show that you know there is no you know treasures here for you treasures only in heaven is god was trying to show him only there if god was only trying to show him only treasures in in heaven alone not nothing here on earth If you go on to read that same chapter you know Mark 10 verse uh, 28 onwards Peter is asking 
Lord, we left everything for you and we followed you. What will we get? What was Jesus answering to them? Look at what Jesus said to, you know, Peter. Not only to Peter and disciple, Jesus saying that answer to every one of us. Today you wonder what will I, you know, get, you know, if I just give everything and lay up put, you know, treasures in heaven alone, what will I have here? God is talking when you do there. Don't forget you are enjoying the benefit here. Receiving account opens here, my friend. Here and there. Now and eternity. Look at what Jesus said in verse 28. 20, 28 is Peter is asking Jesus. And verse 29, Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that has left house or brother or sisters or father, sister or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or land for my sake and the gospels. Answer 30. Look at the answer Jesus says. But he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time. Look at that word. Jesus is saying now and also eternally shall receive hundredfold now in this time house and brother and sisters and mothers and children and lands which persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. Look at that Jesus purposefully saying now and for the time to come. You get that picture? Jesus says you will have it now as well as forever. And, it, and, and look at the reward. He says a hundredfold. Do you know what is hundredfold? Jesus is saying maximum. That means whatever is maximum that I can give you on this earth, whatever the maximum that I can give you on heaven, your eternal life, I will give it to you. That means this scheme is beating all the ATM that is in this world. What is the meaning of ATM? Anytime money. Let me tell you, when you have a receiving account here in heaven, you can withdraw anytime, anywhere, my friend. The question is, do you have this account? Do you have this receiving account? Do you have that receiving faith? Do you hold your life in that receiving faith mode? Or you keep changing online, offline, uh, uh, like that. Very important, my friend. What a beautiful God is ministering you. Maximum. The reward is maximum. And that means now and for eternity. Look at that. Now and for eternity. This is the bank that I want to deposit. This is the bank I want to have an account where I will receive here and as well in return. Even if I die and I leave this earth, I will enjoy the returns in heaven. In such a way, I got to apply the law of faith through my mouth. When I speak, when I do something, when I put forth my action, you know, not only speaking, not only in doing, but also in receiving the benefits for now and for eternity. Have you taken any attention for that receiving account? For that receiving faith? First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. Verse 8. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. For bodily exercise, profit little. Many people, they conclude, you know, what is the use of taking all this effort? What is the effort of doing a thing, you know? They say, no profit. No, no, that's not what it says here. When it compares to the benefit now and eternity, it is very little. That's why you got to be diligent in your work. That's why you have to be obedient to the will of God. And that's why you have to be, you have to apply faith principle with your mouth. And when you speak out, don't just stop it there. Receive it. Receiving faith. 
says here, having promise. Look at that. But godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that is now and of that which is to come. Look at that. Now and the life to come. That kind of account, my friend, that kind of account you should have in your receiving faith. What a beautiful scripture. Look at it. Let me show you one last scripture and pray for you. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold. Look at that. I told you, right? Stay in that faith mode. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art called and hast confessed the good confer confession before many witnesses. Stay on, confess the word of faith and hold on, receiving faith. Hold on in that faith mode to receive the benefit now and for return. Fight that good fight. Many people are thinking Christian life means it's a jolly life. Just sit simply. God will pour some grump, you know, some bone, some bone pieces you can enjoy. God understands your need. God will, you know. No, 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 no. It says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold. Hold on in that faith mode, receiving mode. You understood about, uh, you know, faith principle that starts with your mouth. God is now saying, hold on, open an account. Open a receiving account. Uh, now and for eternity. With that approach, God is saying in verse 17, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, not trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Verse 18, that they do good. Look, at that's important. Put to good use, my friend. Whatever that God puts in your account now, use it for the good. It says that they do good, that they be rich in good work, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Now look at verse 19. Again the word laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold. Look at the word lay hold. Stay on that same mode of receiving faith mode. Stand on that same mode of receiving it with faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Do you change? Do you give up? Or do you hold on there? God says today, you got to be diligent. You got to be obedient. You got to apply faith. And when you apply faith, it applied through your mouth. And today God has strengthened you by showing you that you need to receive by faith. By receiving by faith, you got to hold on in that faith mode. And when you hold on in that same faith, I believe. When I pray, I believe, I receive it. I receive it, I believe it's mine. I hold on there, I open an account. When I give, there is another aspect happening. Receiving account opens. And when the account of receiving opens, God is saying, have you laid up treasures in heaven? That means God is not saying you don't have anything on the earth. He says, your account opens here, now, and for eternal life. Lay hold, hold on to it. And you will see God's law of increasing will work in your life. Shall we stand and pray? What a beautiful God who ministered us with his wonderful word. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for speaking into each and every one of our heart. Lord, thank you for strengthening us that we got to stand firm, hold on, lay hold on the receiving faith. Lord, if we give, there is a receiving faith part in our life and when we receive you open that account you open that account for now and for eternity help us to lay old and receive the benefit receive that blessing and enjoy all the goodness of God into our life this is how we are making your love increase work in our life 
I pray in the name of Jesus that we are blessed but what we what you, what we heard this morning through your word let every word that your people hear this morning minister them continually every time when they open their mouth and speak let them know that their mouth is not a bad mouth and when they lord go through challenges help them to stay on that same mode in receiving uh, in what they believe oh god i pray that every work of their hand will be blessed and these days will be days where they will receive the blessing of god to their faith i pray in the name of jesus that you have opened their account lord in the coming week you will teach us how we need to sow and reap from that account we will learn that in the coming week lord help us to apply this beautiful principle and receive your blessing we give you all the glory and honor in jesus most precious name we pray amen now and him was able to keep us from falling and present us present us faultless before the father son and the holy spirit be majestic dominion both now and forevermore amen amen don't forget god has showed you how you can receive through your faith open that account blessings for now and for eternity the next week we will see how we can sow and how we can reap the harvest i pray that god will bless you and god be with you and god will continue to guide you and protect you tomorrow morning i will meet you with the word for you start your week with god's word receive all of the blessing of god into your life have a blessed week god bless you god continue to strengthen